Good night to you, wonderful viewers there in TV land. Welcome to yet another episode of Let's Talk with Annette Ferguson for today, Tuesday, the 28th day of March 2023. I trust that your week has started on a positive footing and also your day went um, extremely well. That being said, I just need to um, do some announcements before I get in to the program proper. Um, I like to take this opportunity in extending birth anniversary greetings to those of you who might have celebrated a birthday today, um, yesterday, and in the coming days ahead will be celebrated. I also want to extend to those of you who are having a wedding anniversary, whether today or during the course of the week. And for those of you who have, you know, uh, welcome a newborn to the family, I also want to take this opportunity in extending best wishes to you and yours. Also, I want to let you know that June 12th is the set date for local government elections, LGE. 2023. I also want to remind you that um, a few days from today, that is April 17th, 2023, will be nomination day. And I want to underscore the point that local government elections are very important to you as an individual and also the community in which you live. You might have been hearing from the People's Progressive Party Civic Corner that they're going to claim all the local authority areas. This can only be so if we as Guyanese do not go out on June the 12th to vote for the party of your choice or your candidate. And it is only one choice you should have, and that is a partnership for national unity. So if you stay at home, obviously, the People's Progressive Party Civic will claim the winners for your particular area. And you would have seen the way in which they have been handling many of the things in your community. They're not given the um, municipality or the NDC the required financial resources that are needed to ensure that your drains are taken care of, your garbage is empty in a timely manner, your playground is properly maintained, your carpets are properly maintained. You've seen what they have done. And I must remind you viewers and listeners, it was this very People's Progressive Party Civic after 1994 that denied you, yes you, that denied me, my and us the opportunity to vote for those who we wanted to run our local areas. They deprived us 20 plus years local government elections and we must be able to give credit where credit is due. It was the APNU AFC coalition government that would have made local government possible. In March of 2016, we returned local government elections. In November of 2018, we returned local government elections. So in less than five years, the APNU AFC made it possible for you to go to the polls. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, 2023 come June 12th, we shouldn't play with that date. We shouldn't play with that date. Go out and throw your support solidly behind the candidate who will be representing a partnership for national unity and also a partnership for national unity proper. I also want to remind all of us that COVID is still extant. COVID still exists. It ain't gone away yet. It is live and well amongst us. 
So the onus is on us as responsible people to ensure that we continue to wear our mask, sanitize our hands, and maintain our distances. When you traverse the city or anywhere across this country, you want to know where the COVID is free because of the large gathering and people seem not to care. But any responsible person who wants to protect their lives and that of their family will do the just thing of ensuring that they, um, that they protect themselves. But tonight, tonight, we will be, myself and, and guests, we will be discussing some general um, topics. And you know that our nation is confronted with a whole lot of issues. We got this school violence issue. We got the Jack Dio rants at uh, Babu John just under uh, 48 hours ago. Then we have the irregular um, sitting of the National Assembly, the Cane View update, that is something we must never ever forget. It must never ever elude us as Guyanese. Then we have the Peters Hall saga or situation. And you know, just last week, we were told what is happening at out at the Perica Sea down there, uh, where they moved in and you know disrupt the lives of our people so without further ado and for us to have a healthy conversation on these issues she's no stranger to us um she has been on this program prior and um she has been working tirelessly in her constituency representing her people um, a teacher by profession a mother and there's no other person I want to introduce to you than the Honorable Nima Flubess, a representative out of the uh, Mocha area. More so, she has responsibility for the East Bank corridor from Eccles way up to um, Mablissa there on the Linden Suzdike area. So I want to bid you welcome once again, my dear sister. Happy to have you again. Nice you. <laughs> yes. So how you have been? How was your day? Oh, uh, blessed. <laughs> it um, was blessed. Mm -hmm. Tiresome. Mm -hmm. Working very hard because it was end of school year. Yes. And so you have your records to complete and all of that. But blessed, thankful for life. Thankful for life. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm able to visit with my constituency. Mm -hmm. I was able to do a short visit before I came here. So okay. that's very young. Um, Important, yes, you know, we continue to represent the interests of our people. Yes, I know. So, um, outside of that, I know for a fact that you have been working. I think you have your yes, now I think I know that you have your own program. Um, and that program is the People's Representative that yes, comes exactly. that, that is being aired every Saturday from 11 to 11 30. And that is carried across the social media spectrum of the APNU, AFC, and also the MP pages. So, Nima, I just want to commend you for all of the work that you have been doing. You know, you're one MP that is quite visible in your community amongst your people. And that is the way we as representatives ought to be because the only way we can understand the plight of our people is that you have to be on the ground. You gotta walk the mud, you gotta, you know, trot the, the waters and you know, you have been doing a fantastic job, Thank right? You. That is where the work is. So I want to commend you and say to you, continue to do what you are doing, right? Thank but so yes, so Nima, this evening, I want us to start off discussing, you know, this whole issue um, where school violence is concerned. I know you're an educator by profession and for the past few months, weeks, we have been seeing, you know, a drastic change in the school system. What do you um, make of it? Well, I must say that um, school violence more so, mm -hmm. um, students attacking teachers or parents uh, attacking teachers is 
of great concern as an educator, as a parent, yeah. and uh, a member of society. Um, we have seen a drastic decline in moral standing, um, mm -hmm. where people previously would have showed great respect for their um, teachers, even if you were in a village, you would know if Annette is a teacher, teacher yes. Annette, yes, yes. or teacher Maureen, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, passing on the road, people want to, you know, reach out and talk to you and all of that. But what we've seen recently, um, where we have moved from a stage of this level of respect mm -hmm. to great disrespect in the school system is worrisome. Because if a teacher got to leave their home, their family, to go into the classroom to educate students, and you have to be wondering, instead of a teacher being concerned about the grades of the child, the um, welfare of this child, you now have to be wondering um, what would be the response or how could you be attacked um, in the system by a child, and that should not be. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, I would want to call on our parents because the child is being nurtured from home. Um, I, to encourage your child to be respectful um, mm -hmm. to their teachers and the persons that they have to be um, in, under their care for the hours that the parents are not there. The reason why the teacher is like a parent. Yes. When your parent goes to work and they send you to school, if something should happen to you in the school, they teach the children this in social study, the school family. If something should happen to you in the school, it is expected that the teacher will mm -hmm. uh, be there to support, protect this child, make contact with the parent. Likewise, in every family, you have, from time to time, you have disagreements. Yes. There are issues that may not be settled away or something would be dealt with in a manner that does not cause you to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Talk. Yeah. You communicate, you know. This, the manner in which you spoke to my child or some whatever, I wasn't too happy or how this situation was dealt with, but for you to just run in, hit a, um, start hitting the teacher or the, the, the child start attacking the teacher cannot bring a proper resolution, resolution. Mm -hmm. to um, this issue. And so we have to understand communication. I can tell you from a teacher point of view, if I'm the class teacher, the parent first point of contact is the class teacher. Mm -hmm. So if child comes home and say, you know, mommy today Pat stole my pencil and I got licks for it. Mm -hmm. When I complain to this, as a parent you might be home, you might say things that you shouldn't in the presence of the child. Mm -hmm. You may not visit the school to interact with the teacher to find out what's happening. And then imagine the child hearing you saying things that you should not, but go to school the next day all hype that my mommy say. Mm -hmm. That could lead to escalation in the situation. Mm -hmm. But what a responsible parent would do is make contact with the teacher. Mm -hmm. Go to find out, you know, if this is what happened, um, how it was dealt with, and, and maybe they get a different picture. Mm -hmm. And as an educator, I will be dealing with things like this. Ever so often, a child go home, they tell the teacher about the problem that they had in the class. They go over, they complain to the parent. The parent draw their own conclusion. When they do come, mm -hmm. the teacher didn't even know what they're talking about. So these are some of the things we have. Some parents need to understand the first point of contact with your class teacher. Mm -hmm. If you talk with the class teacher, you're not satisfied. You might have a supervisor for the level. Engage the supervisor. If you're not satisfied, you got a deputy, you got a head teacher. Mm -hmm. If you're not satisfied at the school level, you move to the Ministry, Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. Now, if we follow all these um, chain of command, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to end up with this attack and this yeah. violence and all that in the classroom because I'm worried I'm really worried I tell my colleagues the same thing I wouldn't have want to know teacher leave to go to school and gotta come out in the body bar yes. I would never want to live to experience something like that mm -hmm. and as a result of somebody not listening or paying attention so we shouldn't move there we have to ensure that we do what is necessary and communicate communication is the key Communication is the key between the parent and the teacher because all of us, our focus there, the parent, the teacher, and the Ministry of Education should be to create or to empower a well-rounded individual that can be functional in society. Mm -hmm. And if we understand that it's our purpose, then if we work collectively and communicate with each other, 
then we'll be able to achieve that. But if you create a child who is violent against the, the teacher, disrespectful and all that, that child most likely will find themselves in a lot of challenges along the way mm -hmm. because when it comes to authority. So these are things we have to, you know, focus, focus on. on. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You know, Nima, I have my sister after me, just after me. She's an educator. And I can tell you sometimes we briefly have these conversations, mm -hmm. you know, she um, teaches at one of the um, level schools there here in Georgetown. And she would say, sis, once I see a troubled child, a child who misbehaves and you talk to them once, twice and thrice, she tries to stay away because she wouldn't like to experience what other educators have been experiencing and it is something that i believe we should have like a national conversation about yeah. because you had a recent situation at houston secondary and i cannot perhaps i don't know if it missed me but i cannot recall hearing from the ministry of education i know that the guiana um, teachers Teacher union you know, was able to intervene and had the matter resolved between the parent and mm -hmm. teacher very amicably. But this is happening too often. And yeah. if you look at it, if we to really do a comparison and an analysis from 2015 to 2020 August, we had these situations in schools. Let us, you know, be frank with ourselves. But since the return of the People's Progressive Party Civic, we have seen the lawlessness, you know? So it starts from the head of this nation and it's and it's coming right down. So once the head isn't right on the body, every other organ of the body will start to dysfunction. And this is what is happening. Nima, as an educator, what would you want to see implemented by the Ministry of uh, education to have such situ such um, situations, you know, um, eliminated from the school system. Well, one of the things I can tell you, I think the Ministry of Education need to um, encourage parents to use the the channel of communication. Mm -hmm. I've known cases where, like I said, things happen and teacher yeah. know, but Ministry calling about the matter. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, and it caused you to wonder. So if this matter came to your attention, why you didn't send the parent back to the school? Yes. So that the parent can interact and all of that, and then you do a follow-up on it. Mm -hmm. I got an issue with that. I personally see that as an issue, because what you would have done in a situation like that is that supersede all the um, respect mm -hmm. that should be given at the ground level to the teachers, the head teacher, whatever. You pick up the matter and just run with it. But you have not um, engaged yes. properly with those at the bottom. So ministry is aware of the channels that we have, and I would encourage that you know, if something like that should happen, like parents just turn up at the ministry, they ask you, send them back to the school so they would understand that the the teachers are the first point of contact if you have um, something. Yeah. Um, if it's something that was dealt with at the school and finished with, and they're not satisfied, you go to the ministry. That different situation. But if it's something new, the school is not aware of it. Send them back to the school so they'll understand that. The second thing, I believe that um, teachers need to be more um, involved in certain processes. You know, you're making a decision, you, you, you're making a decision about critical things that will affect the teacher, you consult with the teacher, you just do a memo, you send it off. I think that in itself also tells you if you're my boss, the ministry is there to do whatever, but you're not even showing basic respect yes. for the teachers in the system. What do you expect people to interpret it? To be. To be. Mm -hmm. So these are things that they also need to look at in, their, in what they're doing. Ensure that the teachers are involved. You can't, you know, make decisions and exclude the teachers. It's a different thing, you know, I tell people, people talk about being a teacher and they would have had years of experience as a teacher sometimes, they now turn an education officer. Mm -hmm. But the system that we had in 1970 is, is not a system that exists now no, exactly. in 2000. And 23. Mm -hmm. The system we had in 2001 is not a system that exists yeah. now in 2023. So you need to look at these things. So sometimes you know they run the idea you are in the system. We know what you would have experienced in the system back then is not what the teachers are experiencing now because you have a generation of children. One, they know a lot about their rights, mm -hmm. but 
they don't understand the responsibility that it comes with the rights. Mm -hmm. And I remember we used to do courses like that where they teach you mm -hmm. rights and responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, and I think these are things we need to reinforce. reinforce. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, you have a generation now where they're exposed to a lot of information mm -hmm. on the internet and all yes. these things. Yes. So when you are looking at your methods and your policy, you have to understand how to deal with it. So if a child comes and carry on in a particular manner, you go in and say, you know, child, um, this should not be whatever. That method may not work mm -hmm. because that child, the exposure that that child has is way above what you're coming with. You come with yeah. 1970 method. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. You know, mm -hmm. these are things we have to look at. And so the education system cannot be static. It got to be dynamic. dynamic yeah. So you got to be able to have your researchers checking out, mm -hmm. looking at other systems in other countries, how they dealt with. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that, that, that I look at you got this no child left behind policy with nobody's repeating. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. When you end up with a set of children coming out of school, they can't read. They can't do the basics. Mm -hmm. What other institution do you have to give these children the support they need to bring them up? No. So we make a policy, you make a decision that this is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because you probably get a funding or something you need it. Mm -hmm. But you have not stopped to think that if we create a society with delinquents and more these children are that are impacts. cannot, you know, read mm -hmm. and all these things, you would find that you would have an absorption of violence, yes. disrespect and all of that because you created, you did not stop to do any proper analysis and investigation that if you do this no child left behind policy and a child just fly through the school system because of this no child left behind policy, they learn to read, they learn to write, they learn to do anything. Where will the child go after school? <laughs> Where is the institution that will take that? Under the LFS era, when you had the community high school, the skills mm -hmm. training centers, mm -hmm. where you could go and learn these additional things. Yes. If you're not totally book savvy, you got things that will empower you in terms of your skills. Where is that happening here? You don't go to TI at, six, at, at 14. No. You don't go to GITC at 14. You got to reach a certain age. So if a child decides to drop out of school, they got no skills training center that they, 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 they set up or establish. Yeah, the community high schools. Mm -hmm. I, I think these are things that they need to look back at and reevaluate really because we once had the best education system. Exactly, exactly. You know, um, Nima, just before we move off from this particular issue, is that um, after the recent situation there at Houston Secondary School, mm -hmm. I heard the call from the GTUC, your union, the union that represents... GTU. GTU, sorry, the union that represents teachers calling for um, legislation to be revised, amended. You understand? And, 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 it, and it would center on some of the very points that yeah. you um, alluded to earlier. And the point they also, the other call they made was for proper security well, at the schools because, and I heard the, the president, um, Mark Brother Kite, say that some of these schools, you know, you got them, the, the big men who can hardly move. You understand me? So if you put able bodied people in the school, m more so uh, for security purposes, I don't think we would be experiencing these things in the school. That is, is absolutely correct. Um, the, the, the guards, they got to pay the people properly and they got to track the right set of people. That's the first thing. So yes. you, you want to employ me to work from 9 to 3. You're not even giving me enough money to, mm -hmm. to buy a snack. I just went and buy a snack. It cost me $600. Forget a biscuit, a drink, and a water. <laughs> so if you want, you don't even pay me 5 6 an hour. Yes. That's only what people should do. Go and ask the security guards in the school how they pay per hour. Mm -hmm. And you will understand. Now I, I'm getting paid next to nothing. Yes. And you have me sitting there. Or I'm not too well. Mm -hmm. what, what is there to motivate me or to drive me? They yes. need to do better to increase, improve the um, security of the school. And like mm -hmm. I said, make reference to we're living in modern times. Mm -hmm. The exactly. children are exposed, ex uh, exposed to different things. They got drugs and all these mm -hmm. things that you're dealing mm -hmm. with in the system. Mm -hmm. And we still got 19, 1864 system or 19 whatever system where you just come when you go in the schoolyard and yes. all of my daughter could dress code. No sharp pants, whatever, whatever, what is it? 
Yeah. But so they need to work on improving the security of the school because we're living in a different, different time. time. Mm -hmm. And you live in a different time. Yeah, and you know what is the sad thing? I, I also heard the call for more welfare where the social workers because that remember, is remember yeah, because you know children come from varying backgrounds. Of and course. you know, they, they come to school, some may come disturbed, but who is there in the system to really give them, to sit and to listen to them? So, I mean, every year, you got hundreds of people coming out from the University of Guyana, graduating with a degree or a, or a diploma in social, social. Work, in, in social work, and still cannot, the schools cannot attract these things. So something is definitely wrong with the system. The money is not right. You need to pay people. That is so true. You want to pay people for the service. So, so true. So, you know, so true. I'm out of um, with a degree. You don't want to pay me. But mm -hmm. yes, we need to have social worker who can interact, talk with these children, really understand. Exactly. Well, you see, all the years, as a teacher, is yes. performing the, yeah. the role of the social worker, the Everything. judge, the mother, the father, the jury, the doctor, and all these Everything. things as the teachers. And mm -hmm. so that's why we should be even paid better. Exactly. exactly. Because we've been doing all of that. We yes. ought to get better salaries. Yes. And if they put the right things in place, you know, how, how great the system would be. But no, you know, they really need to do better. Yes, yeah, so true. You know, Nima, I don't even think you know that you know, I, I, I have a you know, degree in social work, you know. So perhaps, you know, when the time come, I try to give my little assistance where 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 is needed but you know I, I i want to join the call that my colleague made here earlier to you parents please your child is sent to school on a daily basis to be educated and if there's a problem between child and teacher by right you as parents, you will go do your investigation. But don't attack because you're putting that child at a disadvantage. You understand me? Teachers wouldn't want to continue uh, um, training or, or, or exposing that child to learning. You're making bad for your child. So I want to encourage us parents, if you have an issue with, with, your, with, with a teacher, um, against your child, please let us deal with it in a professional way. And once it is handled professionally, believe you me, these issues can be addressed amicably. Right? Nima, I now want to turn our attention to the latest rants. This man that this country got to deal with on a daily basis. You know the viewers out there know his name, and all of us know his name, Barrett Jagdio. And you know he hosted a press conference, it might have been last Thursday, where he referred to um, Comet Hamilton Green as fossils. He referred to um, Anand Gulsaran, the former author, um, Auditor General, as fossils. And I think some other other names he, he made reference to those people as fossils but i want to take you to babu john and it seems to me every year in the month of march this is where we buy gonna show up at babu john and either tell the constituents out there granger got blood on his hands, would do you recall that? Yes, brain, brain, Granger got blood on his hands. Kick the how the PNC gonna send people to rape people, girl, children. We gonna put to send police to kick down the door. Well, we not had the kind of attitude in 2021 mm -hmm. and in 2022, but the latest was in 20, uh, was in 2020 just after the elections when you had the saga oh when they come into your villages chase them out you understand me sunday gone there the 20 um the 20 sunday was with the early 27th mm -hmm. no the 25th mm -hmm. right or the 20 no the 26th right yeah the 26th of march and he had a whole lot to say 
And what do you make of this, you know, these loose remarks by Mr. Barrett Jagdio? As a, as, as a leader. I'll tell you what. From the time um, I've heard of Barrett and, and look at how he goes on, mm -hmm. he, be, he, he behaves as though he is Lord God Almighty over Guyana. Yes. But he's not. Mm -hmm. He is not. He talks as though the thing, you know, he's this big bully. Mm -hmm. And and he can call anybody any name. He can say anything. And when people speak, it's racism. Mm -hmm. It's this, it's that. But you know, my older folks always teach me a thing. When you point your finger, how much pointing back at Four you? Pointing. Four pointing. Four pointing back at you. So when he's pointing his finger and calling our comrades and, and, and people who would have worked tirelessly for the enhancement and the betterment of Guyana, making labels of them, I would say to him, he should stop and think for a minute. What will people say of him? Yes. This we should stop to think. Mm -hmm. At least I can't think of anything good about him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't. I personally cannot think of anything good about him <coughs> because mm -hmm. his words and his action tells you that there's nothing good about him. Mm -hmm. His words and action tells you that. If you could stand up and, t and, and, and telling people that they must chase leaders or out. If we should start chasing them out, they deserve to be chased out because yes. they're doing things to oppress yes. people. Mm -hmm. Their action speaks to oppression. Mm -hmm. We have a right to tell people to chase them out because they're oppressors mm -hmm. that comes to the um, to people community. Mm -hmm. And they're running as though they're there to save, but they're not. Mm -hmm. All they're interested in is themselves. And so while he is jumping and ranting and raving, there are four fingers pointing back at him. So when he is carrying on about who is what and what could happen where and all of that, they got issues. He need to look at himself. He need to stop and think. So he might know what our comrades are. He can label our comrades now, but what label will he, he be, be carrying? Mm -hmm. What label can he carry? Right now we got a label of he, the dead squad. And not only that, the other so many labels. The Look how many gets. labels he got. The so scandal exactly. recently. Exactly. Yes. Huh? Right. Covetousness. <laughs> yes. Wickedness. Mm -hmm. The things you do to oppress people. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking at um, his statement. The good thing is I don't really pay much attention to the to the ignorance because I already know in my mind there's nothing good about that individual. Because I've seen it. You see the actions say that. Yes. The words say that. There are those who might want to believe differently. Well, then if you believe that his actions and his words are correct, then you're no different. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be spending my energy focusing on, on, on somebody that has no, no, no good, good. Mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. Because the things you say doesn't speak to anything good. The actions you portray does not speak to anything good. So why should I be paying attention to no good? <laughs> yes. And, you and know, these are things that guys, these people need to wake up to, you know. Exactly. I tell people, if you want to know what the PPP and all of them will do to you, listen to the press conferences. Listen to everything they say. Mm -hmm. They tell you what they will do. Yes. I always look at them budget speech. You see them budget labels? Mm -hmm. What they want to put back? A dynamic economic world? Well, 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 for this year, it should have been prosperity for all. But we right. don't see prosperity right. for all means for go, one. Go, exactly. And I think last Economic year, dynamism, dynamism, dynamism or something was dead to the Guyanese economy yes. for most people. Yes. So till now people can't wake up. You check every budget speech, the, the headline, and check all the action is the exact opposite in it. Yes. And you know, Nima, I don't know, perhaps, as you said, you didn't... Uh, what I gleaned from you is that you haven't followed... This, his, his, his speech I to the gathering very talking black, about how black, they're, they're the most Sunday. inclusive yeah, the um, government party Ex exactly to who for what well we know we, we know we know exactly those what. people who are running behind them they said they didn't invite people to Babu Jan but when we go back to history you know um, when we when we tend to forget our history we like it to repeat, to repeat. Mm -hmm. the mistakes of the past mm -hmm. so he's saying that but we can pull up Babu Jan activity for the last couple of years and you can make a comparative analysis exactly and you will see who fetch people to Babu John. exactly Simple. yes but you know what i want to make clear here to our viewers and listeners because sometimes you know we would we 
as you rightfully put, if we don't know better, if some of our people don't know better, they will yeah. be misguided and misled. Barra Jagdio stood at that activity on Sunday with a straight face. He's a liar. So he a pathological liar, he be, to say to the gathering there that we in the coalition still, that's what he, that's the word he used, we still the 10,000 cash grant from the children. Well, viewers, let me set the record straight. And let me remind you, in 2014, heading to the 2015 elections, the PPPC recognized that they were losing ground. And they so believed that Guyanese like money. And what they did, they came up with this um, policy, this 10,000 cash grant in 2014. Then they realized that this is not sustainable. There is a cabinet document where a decision was taken collectively in late 2014, early 2015, signed by then cabinet secretary, Dr. Roger Luncheon, that this policy cannot be sustained. You understand me? When we went in, we were, we were able to have the 5Bs initiative. So for Barrett Jagdio to stand and tell the nation, the, cons the people that were gathered there on Sunday, that we stole the $10,000 from the Guyanese children, it's a big fat lie. And I don't understand why we as Guyanese would allow this man, one who said he was supposed to be coming to our community. Sometimes when I listen to this man, it really worked me up. Because I realize he's not a genuine leader. No. It's a man who feels that, well, look, in order for him to control people, you, you understand me, he got to tell lies. These are not leaders you should believe in, ladies and gentlemen. The time has come for us to choose leaders who, got, who are decent, Leaders who are honest and leaders with credibility. And Barat Jagdio has none of that. But I want to add, come in there a bit. You know, you talk, you talk about the coalition stealing things from the families. I want to ask the families. Under the coalition government from 2015 to 2020, I am sure they slept comfortably. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I am sure that they had to worry that if the children go out, they ain't going to come back. Mm -hmm. I am sure that when they worked, the monies that they received could have fed the family and supply their needs. And still got And savings. still got a little thing put aside. Yes. I am confident of that. Mm -hmm. But now, they come back now with the, the grants and all the cost of living gone up. The, the grants is just like, and that's it. Yeah. And you got the breezy money passing out, but they're giving out because by taking like it, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And your children still ain't getting adequate things, you ain't getting adequate things, mm -hmm. but they're claiming that they're doing all these grants, but you're not benefiting from these things that you could sleep comfortably mm -hmm. and you don't feel secure in home anymore. Yes. So, people need to recognize that all the rant and rave that they're going on with, there's a reality on the ground. Exactly. You can, people can hardly sleep comfortable because of the injustice and the wickedness that they continue to do. And the grants that they're giving out were blowing out your hand like wind, like, 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 like salt. Mm -hmm. And you're benefiting. Exactly. And you know, you're benefiting. You're absolutely correct because I, you know, moving around the city, you know, ordinary Guyanese would ask the question, Miss Ferguson, MP Ferguson, Minister Ferguson, with this aisle money there, we are feeling it. The drink Just is. last week, a small businessman I had, a, you know, s s sit down with him. And he too was complaining to me. We in I am feeling this thing. All this money we're passing through. But I want to say to you viewers and listeners, what the People's Progressive Party Civic is doing to this nation is wrong. All that Bharat Jagdio is concerned with is himself. And don't worry with all these projects we are see going on in this country. You know, come 2024, those very projects will be incomplete. So I can that, tell you wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. 
we can speak of him about on this program but i will now come to the next issue i want us to touch on and that is the irregular holding of the national assembly the last sitting of the national assembly was when the budget passed viewers on february 2nd 2023 we're actually heading to a new month and come april 2nd 2023 we'll make it two months since we haven't had a sitting. And this government, Nima, you would recall that they boast about a robust legislative agenda. But what is, where's this robustness gone, Nima? Probably you can come in here. The robustness is in the budget passing. <laughs> you go to Parliament for budget um, in February. Mm -hmm. They're going to wait till the 90 days are almost up and they're going to put the next sitting. I'm, I'm talking to Wizard. They can come for supplementary. And, and plus, they can come for supplementary because by then, they can don't say that, that they don't exhaust the money, which they do, actually don't exhaust. Exactly. And they need more. And then they can go on a long period and come December, close mm -hmm. to December, they can come back for some more, a little more money. Mm -hmm. And then they can dash some bills in by December and then next year budget again. Exactly. That's all the, that's that's all a trend. We have that has been the, the trend. Uh, parliament. I yes. actually said I'm going to look at it. Yes. And then. You write questions to them, and then they take how was a month or six weeks or how long to give a response to any question from the ministers. You ask how much questions you send in, submit, and long, long, long you gotta wait to get an answer. It might be something with a particular issue, and so that is basically Parliament life in Guyana. February you go for a week or two, deal with budget, pass the money, ninety days coming up, call the next sitting for some little more money, and then. They can go down another couple of days, call another sitting, yes. dash in a bill or two, and then December, come for Kelly with some bills, because Kelly know we got, with, we got with family for Christmas, yes. some people ain't got none. Exactly. And so then we came to call Parliament um, the time and how late, because yes. they don't concern my family. Exactly. They ain't think about family when you got, but we know we got. And then, oops, next year budget. So basically, this is the life of the Parliament. Yeah, and you know, and the Parliament is an important institution because that is where we as your representatives will go and take the many issues that are that you're faced with whether it's the high cost of living the flooding the housing matters those are things we have to debate in the national assembly and with the irregular hosting of the parliament we're at a disadvantage and you the people are left to suffer because Nima is absolutely correct is I got several questions that I would have put to the Minister of Housing since my return from suspension since February month March is already exhausted coming to April so by the time the minister is ready to respond to those questions the yes. matter done you know that. done gone it done stale but I know you, they will still have to answer. So, viewers, we have a major problem. We, as your elected officials, we are doing everything in our interests to ensure that your issues are addressed at that level. But we have a regime that NK and the gatekeeper for speaker, he too just don't care. But moving on, Nima, because I know we're few minutes to program time um the cane view update would you like to provide our viewers with uh, an update because the last time you were here we dealt extensively with what it was happening out there at cane well an update for cane view as you're aware it's two months and going to the third month they were destroyed january 5th mm -hmm. a day i will always remember mm -hmm. 2023 just after christmas yes. um Nine families were brutally braided down by the PVP administration. They've decided that they're not gonna compensate those people, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so we have a legal team working with the people, mm -hmm. but I can tell them they will compensate them. <laughs> I'm gonna say that boldly, they will compensate mm -hmm. them. So mm -hmm. all who get drawback, 
little money building new house because i check i wonder if i not do a thorough investigation and i'm waiting on them i did, did a thorough investigation i don't get all what i got to get from this um cane view um destruction of those people home all you can give you can you can make sure they're comfortable you will make them comfortable if you decide you don't want to voluntarily do the right thing you can do it eventually so the administration should get it right and the people of this country local government elections you talk about earlier these are issues you almost address. Don't vote for them. Don't vote for a government that's going and break down people's homes, destroying people's lives. This is all they're doing. This is their track record. Success. The start. Yes. They come to Cane View. Now they got some over the river. The, now the hustle with Peter's Hall. And the, and the <laughs> hustle with Peter's Hall. That's the track record. This is why you want to vote for local government elections. No, you don't want to vote for that. These are issues. You keep on the front border and it goes right across the country because they're Guyanese. What about those people who are having the babies and can't get the birth certificate one month, one year passing and they can't get BC, but people come in this country and get the documents. These are things that we have to deal with. Yes. And so the people of Cainview, they're there. They're staying with their relatives still mm -hmm. and they're living. Thankfully, we're thankful for all the persons who continue to contribute to their upkeep. Yes. in helping them to be comfortable. We had a very um, unfortunate incident recently where we were driving from one of the contractors came view. I saw one in the PPP media wrote up a bunch of ignorance. But I can handle them properly Saturday. Um, a driver pelt a child and damaged his nose mm -hmm. at Kane view. The child lives on the opposite side of Kane view. The kite bus when he went over there, a big strapping driver and left him there. I went to it. Un unfortunately or fortunately, how the situation turned out, Yes. Um, he was able to get into the custody of the police and all of that. And of course, the parents de decided to settle. Mm -hmm. But the actions that was done there speaks volume mm -hmm. to the type of people that we're dealing with in society. Imagine you pelting a child to injure a child for picking up a kite. So that child was being a child who witnessed the destruction, the destruction. of his friends, the home at Cane View. And now he was playing with some of the set friends and a, dr and a driver that works in the cave view area with the contractor pelt him with a brick. Could you imagine the psychological yes. damage that was done to those young, young boys? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these are some of the things we continue to do, but the people at cave view are there, they're trying, mm -hmm. and we continue to work together and give them this much support that they need because they deserve it. They're Guyanese. Yeah, you know, Nima, I gain viewers. I want to make this point. My colleague from the get-go has been working tirelessly with those persons who have been affected with, you know, what the government would have done. And I want again, Emma, to commend you. You stood the test of times with those people. You did not leave them on their own. You do exactly what representatives should be doing. So once again, kudos to you and the team out there. Um, Peters Hall is a part of your constituency. And, um, you know, we're now being told that some residents will have to be removed to facilitate the construction of the new Demerara Harbor Bridge. Look, I've spoken extensively on this matter. I've written letters to the editor um, where this particular situation is concerned. But you know, um, Nima, I wouldn't, I, I don't know if you recall, during the budget, the goodly bu bishop was asked several questions. <laughs> and we, I found out that what was provided in the National was Assembly that, was, was far true. from the truth. So I know that you have been in that community. Can you say exactly today, being the um, the 28th day of March, I think they were given notices to remove by the 12th or the 17th of April. So can you provide an update? Well, my uh, last update, I could tell people with Kate Peter's our situation, I'm seeing a similar practice to that of Cain View. Mm -hmm. These people just look and say, you know what, the bridge guy in there, they make the decision, 
They had one public meeting with the people at the NDC office. Then they're sending some people to go to the people, telling them they got to move. They've been asking no question. This, this is how the process go. Yes. They've been asking no question. They, they're determining if you, what you think should value. Mm -hmm. They ain't giving the people no chance to be involved in the process or nothing. They don't make a decision. The people got to move. And so the same actions with the did at Cape View, the same attitude, the same principle, the same practice is what they're coming towards the people at Peter's Hall. But I'm quite confident the people there will do what is necessary to ensure that they get themselves protected. Because yes. you serve in a notice with people. I remember talking to one resident, a big man, the man said, I don't know nowhere else. My parents give me this home, I grew up here. I make my family here, I'm growing my children here, and then you just come and turn up at my house. Nobody never engaged him, nobody never had a discussion with him for telling that he got moved to somewhere in, in Little Diamond, mm -hmm. in, in an area, and he got the fruit trees, he bearing fruit trees and everything in his yard, well kept and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But he got to move. But again, again, I'm calling on the viewers, this is what a PPPC government is about, bullyism, lies. You're telling people you're engaging them in a discussion and a process, but you're telling nothing. Ask the people in Peter's when they first learned that they have to move in the newspaper. Yes. That's where they got the first notice mm -hmm. in the newspaper that the bridge going there. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to the people. No. It's not fair if you talk about good governance. Then you have to engage your people. Mm -hmm. In the first place, the bridge was never to go there. Exactly. The bridge was to go somewhere else and it would not have affected nobody in that matter. Exactly. But what they did with the area? I rich. Yes. And you know, they know that they got to protect. I rich. And they got to protect their friends who got businesses they in that area. They're connected and so you're going to break up and destroy the lives of people. Poor, poor people. Who have their mm -hmm. cultural heritage. And just like Canvey, you tell Canvey, got a culture. Easter time is a big time at Canvey. I know this Easter going to be very hard for those people because they used to come and socialize. Just like the people at Peter's are what they're about to do. Those people have a culture there. They don't take that into consideration. No, no. They do not. They don't take into consideration. These are these people' way of life. There are certain things that these people are accustomed to. You want dash your people for land of a flood? They got to build land. They got to go and do certain things because if you want to check in them areas where they're selling development, very low. Oh my gosh. Very very low. Check the area. Some and, and the construction of these magnificent low class standard work where they're giving people for houses. Check it out. I just go and visit the area, yes. as I can tell you. Yes. And you know, you know, it's very sad. Yeah, and you know, I'm, I'm happy that you brought out that point because, and this is a matter I intend to discuss on this program when it comes to housing. Be in Golden Grove, there on the east bank of Demerara, they had given their friends uh, Queensway, to be precise, I can call the name because I got the records. Queensway was given certain acre acres of land just before or just a little after the 2015 elections in May of 2015 and he never developed that area because you know why the area was very very low I heard since the change in government in 2020 he has since surrendered that area so what the government through the Ministry of Housing Central Housing and Planning Authority they're now doing is putting people in that particular swamp, yeah. in that swamp because I I was told it is a swampy area Nemo we gotta go and visit mm -hmm. to see exactly what is happening so this government don't believe in 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 consultation they don't believe in good governance they believe it's the highway or oh, no, their no. way mm -hmm. and it's quite unfortunate that our people citizens got to you know put their tails between their legs no. and say nothing but you don't have to do it the constitution give you the right to speak out so don't let barrett and the team feel that they can intimidate you or if you protest we gonna bring um um, um terrorism um charges. charges against you no way because they want to muzzle us and they will not be allowed to muzzle us so we are your representatives and we will continue to rep for you nima we're now down to our time right um so in wrapping up you know the people's national congress reform is celebrating the centennial anniversary of its founder leader and i know you have been doing a lot of reading a lot of research 
what stands out for you where Forbes Burnham is concerned as a member of the People's National Congress Reform? He was a leader for all people. Mm -hmm. um, I was privileged as a child to walk with LFS Burnham in my community. Mm -hmm. um, where you walk down when you had Burnham Boulevard, yeah. the road that was constructed to join Mocha and Arcadia's one. Mm -hmm. I was privileged to be around there. And as well, I was in politics as a child, yeah. running around um, running around the area. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would have seen my grandparents and the women in my community in, in their political um, thing. But like I said to me, he was a leader for all people, and he was a leader who was on the ground. Yes. Moving through the people. I remember seeing the horse mm -hmm. and all these things. So I have my fond childhood memories um, of him being in my community, walking down that road and all of that. So um, for me as an individual, that's one of the things that I seek to emulate also. Yes. Um, I love being among people, mm -hmm. and if you are with the people, then you understand, and that's why you would see that the policies and so that he had was to meet the needs of the people because he understood um, what the people needed. And so that's one of the things that stand out for me. Thank you. Even you. Even <laughs> I tell you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. I got, I got pictures too. too. Okay. okay. All right. So um, I know we got like two minutes into program time. So I just want to, um, I'm happy that you were able to share your fond memories of who Lyndon Forbes Samson Burnham yeah. is, you know. This is a period in which we celebrate his um, um, 100th birth That's anniversary, and this will go until February uh, 2024. So we must be able, you know, on this program, I try to at least ask all of my guests who appear here to give, to say something about who Forbes Burnham um, was. So in wrapping up, you want to say anything to our viewers and listeners? Yes, um, to our viewers, I, I want to thank you so much, um, Common Ferguson, for having me on your program and to your viewers for tuning in and listening to me. I hope that our <coughs> conversation, our talk tonight would have been impactful. Mm -hmm. I want to say to you, and it um, would have referred to earlier that you know people want to put their um, tails between the legs and be quiet, use local government to speak. Yes. Use the local government elections to speak and through the people be in control, no NBC. Mm -hmm. And you have the control, and so you can see them and get the act together. You gotta shake them, man. Yes, yes. And so I'm gonna encourage our people use the opportunity at local government to shake them. Mm -hmm. And because imagine you're controlling all and you're treating people so much less. Exactly. So people need to think about that and think about the future of our next generation to come, that they can be. Don't stand up and protect them, William. Exactly. Thank you, Thank you very much, um, my colleague, sister, and friend, Honorable Nima Flubes, for appearing on this program. I know you had a tiring day, but you saw the need to be here to share with our wonderful viewers there in TV Land. Brothers and sisters, this is all the time we have for this program this evening. I want to remind you that... Um, Come Thursday, the program will be rebroadcast. If you miss tonight's live program, you will be able to tune in on Thursday from 8 to 9, where you can review the program, Let's Talk with Annette. I also want to remind you, just below the, um, the, the um, screen there, you can also you know visit the YouTube channel and subscribe. So after the program, you know, we try to have it uh, posted on the YouTube channel so that you can go back there and hear the program. You know, we're trying to work out the whole streaming process here so we can bring the program live, you know, from studio across the social media platform. So I want to say once again, thank you for joining me for yet another episode of Let's Talk with Annette. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to bless your family. And may God continue to bless this beautiful nation of ours. I do look forward to you joining me next Tuesday for another episode of Let's Talk with Annette. Do enjoy the remaining of your week. Ta-ta!